Welcome to the Shoulder Strikes MMA Podcast. You are now listening to the Hot Take Hot Box. Welcome to the Shoulder Strikes MMA Podcast. You are now listening to the Hot Take Hot Box. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Shoulder Strikes MMA Podcast. That's right. You hear that sound. You hear that man with that baritone voice bringing us in. It's us. It's me. It's Matt McSweeney. Like I said, Shoulder Strikes MMA Podcast brought to you by the Hot Take Hot Box. I am joined by Ty Capone. Ty, how are you feeling? I know you uh, you you had a great weekend watching uh, Dan Argetta. You know, get get, get kind of worked over in some of the worst striking defense we've ever seen. And uh, Montserrat Rendon, not to be confused with Anthony Rendon, taking a huge W this weekend. So it was a good weekend for you. Yeah, uh, Chris Liebens, huge L. Yeah, uh, I, I, we, we got to talk we'll about get... that when we get there. I, I, meant, I have that cooked up on the uh, sheet right here of things <laughs> to talk about. Yeah, um, it turns out fighters might not be the best judges either. So it's like we have to completely overhaul our thinking of this, uh, how we're going to fix this judging system. But yeah, that was uh, that was one of the – also, we saw one of the worst not, – not, uh, not to be hyperbolic – one of the worst boxing decisions ever. ever. Really? But it was a female fight. Nobody really, obviously, in the grand scheme of things, nobody really cares. But, uh, yeah, there was a really, really bad fight. Jessica McCaskill, uh, I think that's her name, right? Jessica, yeah, Caskilla, whatever her name is, the uh, the female boxer. She's like, she had all the belts or whatever. Um, I forget who she's with. Is it Matchroom? Hold on. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matchroom on zone, which is, you know, of course, they're going to just try to, Promote the A side. She was like minus three hundred. Yeah, she was like minus three hundred, and uh, she she fought a chick named Sandy Ryan, and uh, apparently everybody thought Sandy Ryan won like ninety nine, ninety one, and it was a split draw with somebody giving it ninety seven, ninety three to McCaskill. Um, I watched some of the highlights. She lost like almost every round, uh, and she got a split draw. <clears throat> so there you go. That's uh, that's boxing, and that's you know that's just <laughs> combat sports. It seems when you go to the judges on any of these sports. It's not. It's not. You're not. You're asking for trouble. It's not good news, and we we learned that throughout this thing. Now, and Chris Lieben taught us a lesson in MMA again. That, like you said, <laughs> these uh, these fighters aren't exactly the greatest, uh, you know, minds in the game when it comes to judging a fight. It's it's not an easy job. We've never said that it's easy to sit there cage side and judge, but if it's going to be your job, I think you should probably have some things that you're good at and some. Some things like no, no 10-8 rounds, you know, on ten eight, things that aren't 10-8s and stuff like that. Just some basic stuff we ask for. And some consistency. Yeah. That's another thing that we ask for. But Too much to ask for. And, you know, they have different guys getting in there with different thoughts and opinions on every fight. So you never really know what you're walking into. But we got some uh, – what do you want to talk about first? Would you like to talk about fight news or would you like to talk about some comments that we got on uh, – some, you know, or some <laughs> thoughts that were on the Grosso fight last week? Uh, let's, that... let's, let's start with that. I'm All excited. right, yeah. So uh, shout out to the college kids. We got a couple comments on those videos. We had a, uh, a gentleman who didn't really speak English, it seemed, to tell us that uh, you know Grosso got beat up and that she lost uh, basically, which you know I didn't necessarily – I don't think I agreed with anything. I, I, I Maybe I thought – I don't even think Valentina really won. I just thought she didn't lose. That's that was my opinion. And you thought Grosso won forty eight forty seven, which was yeah. I don't think is that crazy crazy of an opinion because it just kind of seemed like Valentina gave it away. I didn't even think Valentina deserved the win, but I think the draw wound up being even though how we got there was bad. You know, we kind of talked about that. You can go back and watch that. But here we go. This is uh, I'm not even. Gonna, I mean, this is a with a, a Pokemon avatar. So uh, just so you know what you're walking into. But this is how this gentleman starts the uh, comment off. Let's right? go. I'm not going to watch a second of this video. (laughs) (laughs) So (laughs) right there, we know this guy is locked in, right? right? He's pissed. He's pissed. All right. I'm not going to watch a second of this bullshit, basically. I just want to ask, are you going to talk about how Mike Bell and the worst referee in UFC history, Sal Diamato, which he's not a referee, but that's okay, Pokemon. Yeah. Thank Uh, God he's not. Yeah, gave the fourth round to Valentina, question mark. So, uh, and I'll just, I'll just read the rest of this. As outrageous of a scorecard as the 10-8, except that more relevant because if they would have given the fourth round to Grasso, the 10-8 wouldn't have been that big of a deal for all these idiotic, not idiotic, E, double E, idiotic like people saying Shevchenko was robbed. 
and here your, your little parenthesis action, and should be irrelevant anyways because Grosso clearly won 48-47. In what world did Val? I'm sorry. In what world Valentina won round? Question mark. Grosso landed more strikes, had more multiple sub attempts. Val had zero. Took Valentina's back and slammed her on the ground. So I don't. I, I, I like to, also I got, did have a sub attempt. Yeah, so I would like to hear your thoughts on Mr. Pokemon and uh, what you <laughs> what you ha- what you think. I wish. Uh, <laughs> hey, I guess he won't hear this because he's not going to watch a second of any right. of these videos. But well, um, if I remember correctly, I thought Grosso won the fourth round. I thought the fourth round was the desired. Yes. I thought it was very close. I thought that was the closest round. Um. Let me try to go back and see how the judges... I think two of the judges gave the fourth to Valentina. I think that's what he's saying. Mike Bell and the worst referee, Sal Diamato. So, uh, I mean, I, I really... Either would, of those two reps. Yeah, I would love worth. to see um, Mr. Diamato in, in the octagon with the black shirt on, ready to just get in there in <clears> case <throat> anything happened. Yeah, I, Junichi or Camillo, I feel like uh, him and I were, were spot on here. Two, four, and five I gave to Alexa Grasso. Um, yeah, I, I don't... I don't know. I thought the fifth or the fourth round was very close. Um, let's try to bring up these. That's the la- that's the I round where she like, landed the knees that they went back and said yeah, they were I legal thought, because her hand right. wasn't really bearing weight and all that, and it was kind of like a. She also got a takedown in that round, so I feel like she landed the damage. She landed the bigger, the better, more the the, the more, the more if that makes sense, more shots. Um, yeah, I, th- I thought she won that round. I mean, she almost had as much control as Valentina did. Um, I think she might have gotten her back. No, she didn't get her back taken. That was round three. Um, yeah, I don't. You know, I agree, Mister Pokemon. I think uh, <laughs> Team Grosso won the fourth. I don't. I don't know. I don't know how only one judge gave her the fourth. But like you said, Mike Bell and Sal Diamato, uh not good. Not yeah, good. I mean, we we kind of talked about that too. But I mean, my whole opinion basically of that was you. I would not argue if somebody said that Grosso should have won the fourth round. I don't think, like, I really don't have an opinion on that. I was just more talking about the fact that that you could say the ten eight shouldn't have mattered, but it did matter. So that's why I was talking. Like, that's why I think that's a huge deal. And I just, not even for this fight specifically. If that's how we're doing this, like with those ten eights, then that's a big concern. Like, that's something we need to know when we're going to bet on these fights because it's just like, oh, if the guy. You know, controls the guy for two, three minutes of a round, then he that's a 10 8. It's like, well, not exactly. I mean, if the crowd starts cheering behind you, it's a 10 8. I don't know. Like, it's just a little bit of a concern, I'd say. But uh, I always like to say, shout out to Pokemon and all the people out there who, um, I mean, he doesn't listen apparently, but some of you people out there that are right now listening, uh, feel free to comment on the, YouTube's probably the best way. So find us on the YouTube and go in there and tell us you're a fucking moron. And I'll read all of them for as long as, as I can. You know, if we ever became big and these became a hundred uh, comments on here, I'd read as many of them as I could. I really love reading. You know, but shout out to Pokemon. Thank you for your uh, thoughts, and uh, you know, I hope you. Prayers. I hope you listen one day. I really do. I hope you give us a chance. But we got some fight news, Ty. Before we get into the Fazeev and Gamrot uh, card, but Ian Machado, Gary. What, this is the night of the uh, Leon Edwards fight, right? Leon Edwards, Roy Val. That's, that's a loaded card. Uh, Patty Pimblett and Tony Ferguson, which we're going to talk about in a second. But uh, Vicente Luque and Ian Machado Gary. What are your thoughts on that just right off the rip? Do you uh, – I mean, I, it feels like it's a good matchup for Mr. Gary. Mr. Machado, I'm sorry. Uh, but do you – I guess I would ask you, do you agree? And it's – I don't know. I mean, it, I guess – it all comes down to what version of Mr. Luque is going to show up. Because the version that showed up last time, who was more, you know, controlled and wasn't ready to just go to war with people, that's the version that is scary compared to the other one who just kind of stands there like a punching bag. So I guess this seems like another Machado decision, if you ask me. <laughs> I love that we're calling Machado. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't. I think this is a pretty tough test. I think it's a much tougher test than what Patty Pimble is Oh, getting. for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Luke did look pretty good. I know it was against a uh, RDA that's, you know, not should, should probably not be fighting at 170 or he's just too small, 170 is old. But uh, after after those back-to-back losses to Bilal and Jeff Neal, I thought I thought uh, Luke was cooked, man. That's why I bet RDA. But, um, yeah, I think Luke could uh, provide him with some different looks. I mean, Luke has nasty front chokes that he can pretty much get anybody with. 
Um, I think he has a lot of power in his hands. Uh, his striking in general is not the the best. I mean, his, his um, strikes land it is almost almost dead 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 uh, center with his strikes absorbed. Uh, five point one seven to five point one five. Um, his percentages: strike accuracy fifty two, striking defense fifty two. Uh, his takedown accuracy 60, his takedown defense 62. So um, <clears throat> he's kind of like solid everywhere, but I do have concerns with his durability. The problem is I, I don't I don't know if Ian Gary will push that, um, you know, be a, he really needs to be aggressive and get a finish. Uh, I think if people want to take him serious, um, or more seriously, I should say. Yeah, especially but, after that Neil Magny situation. That was like, <clears throat> he had that guy dead to rights and was just – kicking his leg and letting him get back up and then Terrible. Like, that was a, it was kind of wound up being a snooze fest where you're just like is this guy really ser- like seriously not gonna f-? i mean i had decision so i was happy but it was just i even was like dude he's gotta finish him here like this guy is limping around the octagon he's got nothing for him so if he uh fights how he did against d-rod <clears throat> uh going with the with the head kick i think that could be uh i think that could be really beneficial for him i will i will say though i think what's ian gary's Reach, yeah, he's uh, he's gonna be the taller fighter by like four or five inches, but he has a uh, shorter reach than Vicente Luque. He only has six fights in the UFC. <clears throat> I think Luque has twenty, so um, it's gonna be a really tough test. I know, I, I know some people are probably gonna pick Ian Gary to walk through. I definitely um, consider a play on Luque, depending on what the odds are. Yeah, I haven't seen anything yet. Um, when's the last time Luque got a sub? I guess it was two Darces when he Darced Woodley and Chiesa. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I could see him doing it. I could see him pulling off a sub. I mean, he averages um, almost one, one, uh, what is this? One, one submission attempt per 15. So, you know, he definitely likes to strike, definitely likes to stand, but he took RDA down eight times, had uh, easy success there. Um, I think he was eight of 11, 12 minutes of control time. So I feel like that could definitely be, I guess we'll just see how Ian Gary's takedown defense is, how his grappling defense is. And um, it's a huge, huge step for him. It, it's, um, I don't know. I, th- I think he might be able to outpoint Luke if he stays on the outside. But again, Luke has that 75 inch reach. So uh, he likes to throw some nasty low kicks himself. He's a mean, mean dude in there. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes his performance is a little inconsistent. You know, um, I think the, the Jeff Neal fight was, was not great. Uh, I thought he did, a, he did better than, than, uh, he did better against Bilal, I think, than he did against Luke. I mean, he, or, uh, Jeff Neal, he outstruck Bilal, uh, especially at distance. Um, he just he couldn't stop the takedowns, and then once he got taken down, he was pretty much uh, controlled from there, and basically lost all the rounds that he was doing well in. So um, I don't know. It's gonna be a di- it's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I'm not sure who uh, who I got. I think I might go with Luke just because I kind of have to. You know? It's a I think it's a fight that depends on the odds. Uh, it seems like a, a, a Luke money line if it's like plus two hundred would be very uh, enticing, but if it's you know maybe. Uh, plus 130, 40, if it's like a closer line, then I think an Ian Gary decision probably would look like a nice little bet there. But honestly, it's going to come down to what kind of odds they're giving us on fight night, and we will make our decision then. But we have a couple more to discuss. I'd like to, I guess we'll do Patty Pimblett, Tony Ferguson. I'm seeing this. There's a, there is a lineup for this. Patty's going to be a minus 380 favorite over Tony Ferguson. Another sort of layup that they're kind of trying to trying to set up uh patty pimblet for but i gotta say though ty this is not going to be as easy as we think it's going to be i think i mean i think he should i mean he obviously should win but if you look uh, tony ferguson has dropped his last two fight, uh, opponents and patty can take a shot we've seen that before but patty is also a guy who leaves his chin up there and is he going to be able to get that submission that he seems like he hunts on a uh, on a consistent basis against a lot of these guys, I don't know. This is going to be uh, fascinating by the time it rolls around. It's obviously he should win, but I, I guess I'm a little bit more intrigued by this than I guess maybe the average person. I don't know. Yeah, I think he's probably going to steamroll him, but um, I, I guess you never know, right? I mean, Tony still can hit, and um, we saw we saw Patty his striking defense against um, Jared Gordon. Not great. So, I mean, anything can happen, right? Anything is possible. Um, and if it goes to the ground, I think Tony, you know, I, I don't know, man. I feel like some of his jujitsu, I don't want to say it's overrated, but he just does a lot of, like, flailing around. 
it used to be you know, much better than it is now. It seems, I don't know if he's not training it as much or whatever, but it's obvious that yeah. he's kind of washed up. It, that is, uh, <laughs> yeah, that is um, the case. I would but. say. I think um, I think Patty should get a win here. I, I mean, it's a big fight for him too. I know it's kind of a layup. It's kind of a you know uh, a setup fight for him. But like we've seen how many times that that doesn't necessarily go the way it's supposed to. Like I could see him getting dropped. I could see him getting clubbed and subbed. You know, like Tony Ferguson is. If there's anything, he's he's still fucking tenacious. He's still the, the same psychopath he always was. He's still gonna try and get in there and get a win. He needs a win. Um, how many times? How many fights has he lost in a row? Like six. Who Tony? I'm not sure. I don't have that. I could I could pull that up real quick, but it seems. I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. I mean, has anybody lost seven in a row in the UFC ever? Like, I, I would be very interested to see if that's ever been done. Um, I mean, he hasn't won since 2019. He hasn't won since before COVID. Yeah. So, like. That was the line of demarcation there where he kind of just fell off after that. And the guy he beat that, that was Cowboy. So. Yeah. And before that was Pettis. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, he needs this. He needs to get off the schneid, if you will. Um, I just, I don't know, man. It's a, it's, a, it's a tough task. And this, I don't know if we talked about this last time. I feel like this got made in between the last time we talked and uh, the last pot or whatever. But Shavkat Rachmanov is going to be on that card as well. Uh, on, that card, right? Yeah, it's, I'm pretty sure this is all UFC, what, 296? 296. I think. But Shavkat Rachmanov's fighting Wonder Boy. Now this... Seems like That's a little bit of a fucking a fuck you to uh, <laughs> to Mister <laughs> Mister Wonder Boy, but he accepted the fight, so maybe he people thinks... saying he was ducking the smoke when he who was he supposed to fight or he or he declined the fight was it uh, Michelle Pereira right? No, it was somebody like, the oh, night of the fight. It was oh, no, it was uh, Ian it was... Gary. Oh, uh, was Ian Gary? Because he okay. said he wanted to fight him, and he was like, "No, nah, I'm not fighting Ian Gary." So. But it's crazy though, like everyone. But I thought he was supposed to fight Michelle Pereira twice, right? Yeah, but then Michelle Pereira missed weight and stuff, so he was like, "Nah." I'm right. Not. Everyone's like, "Oh, he doesn't want to fight him because he missed weight, and he doesn't want to fight Ian Gary. He's scared of all these guys." Now he's fighting Shavkat. Now it's like, okay, never mind. This guy's yeah. better than all the guys. He refused the fight. Um, he must be getting a, a, a nice sum of money because nobody wants to fight Shavkat. And obviously, Wonder Boy's not taking this fight for anything less than I would, <clears throat> if I would have to guess, five hundred k, maybe more. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think he's. I think speaking of Shafkat, his sister pulled out of uh, tomorrow's fight on the contender series, unfortunately. So that's that sucks. That's a bummer. Yeah, uh, a lot of people said she was on fraud watch. Also, wow. Fact, okay. So, yeah. Who knows? Right? She might not be as good as uh, as uh, Shafkat. Shout out to Sora. That's her name. But um, I think Shafkat's going to smoke him. I think he's going to. I think he's probably going to eat some shots. I think maybe uh, he's going to. It's going to be tough to figure out the distance a little at first. Um, I mean, Wonder Boy's so good at creating distance and keeping distance and, uh, just distance management in general. He's good at getting out of the way. He's still very, he's still pretty athletic for his old age. Like he's, I think he's 41, right? Which is, I feel like we haven't seen a fighter at that age look, look like him. Like he looks, he looks young in the face. He hasn't really taken much damage for, for how old he is, for how long he's been in combat sports, I would say. Again, I don't, I don't know that for a fact, but, um, he has suffered some injuries, like obviously, but I don't know. I feel like he's 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 a he's a young forty, I guess I'll say. Yeah, and he's only been KO'd off that one kind of freakish Anthony Pettis Superman yeah. punch off the never cage. been submitted. No, so this to me another one, another you know another uh, tough test for for one of these young prospects, one of these hammers. Uh, I, I believe I had Shavkat winning the belt before the year ended. Is that correct? Yeah. Or, before, or in the next year. I forget. It was one of them. It was by the end of 2023, who would be the champion? You have Shavkat, I believe. Yes, sir. So we need to expedite that. I think if he finishes Wonder Boy, polishes him off. I mean, 170, nobody's doing anything at 170. And finally, no. they, got, um, they got Leon and, and Colby made. But I think the Shavkat, if he gets a big finish, a, a statement, you know, if he fucking chokes him to sleep or knocks him out, do you think he gets. Um, he, he he puts himself in contention because all it takes is just you know just to be just to be around just to be active just to be yes, yes I, 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 like there you know they're, they're not going to be like oh Shafkat you're not ready we can't give you a title shot because if if Leon's going to wait if Cole like whatever happens with the Leon Colby fight and then everybody else is just waiting like what are we going to do you know I think he would need probably one more in theory I mean you have Hamza yeah. up there at four who's kind of just 
uh, eating a spot up, so I really don't count him uh, in this. Yeah, whole he's thing, not even so. out on seventy. No, he's not, and he's probably never coming back. I would imagine. So yeah. basically, have Shavkat in the top five, and he's fighting a guy who's right behind him at six. You know, even though I know people are gonna be like, "Well, it says seven. You uh, you understand what I just said?" So, uh, <laughs> you know, Kamaru, Bilal, one of those guys maybe next. Or, or, or honestly, like you said, if he goes out and finishes this guy in dramatic fashion, I could see him jumping there because those guys like. Usman and Burns and all them that, that want to sit on their spots and not fight anyone, it's going to come back to – like Dana will keep passing these guys up because yep. he's not going to reward you by by having you just sit around and wait. Like I don't think Usman's necessarily doing that. You, you've seen him kind of say he'll fight this guy or that guy, but you know yeah. he doesn't want to fight Burns again because that's his boy. And, uh, I mean, I, I assume somebody has to fight Bilal. And Bilal, Burns just – no, was it Burns who just fought him? Yeah. Yeah, right. He got like he was injured or something like that. He hurt his shoulder or yeah. I forget what it was, but yeah. Sand. I think Usman Bilal if if Bilal does you know, wants to sit around and keep waiting. Uh, you know, if not, then I think him and Usman, then they're the or Bilal and Shavkat, uh, you know, depending on how this goes. But uh, it's good to see one seventy get going again because it was kinda oh, like yeah. we, we talked about it. Then a stalemate. Nobody was really doing anything in there and I really just hope they don't reward these people for sitting around standing on their spots, but that uh, that's pretty much all the fight news that we have, uh, I believe. So they also added Cody Durden and Tajir Ulenbekov to that car, which I is saw a that. sneaky good fight. Sneaky yeah. good fight. Cody Durden's Cody Durden's been on a, a a tear lately. Also, a pretty good dude from uh, from everything I've gathered. So big fan there. Hope he does well. Vyacheslav Borshev, your boy Slava, is fighting Nazim Sadikov uh, at two ninety five. That's gonna be a sneaky banger. They're they're really trying to you know beef up two ninety five and two ninety six uh, after this what eighteen week? No, how how long? Eight week? No. How long did we just go with uh, without a break? A fights? Oh, I don't know. Like a couple months. It felt like the a whole long summer. Time. Yeah, uh, it's. Um, so now we're going to take a break this week, thank God, uh, and then get back in there. Walter Cortez Acosta and Andre Arlovsky. That's being made. Wow. Uh, cr- crazy. Wait, what? Uh, Sean Brady, Kelvin. Uh, no, yeah, that, no, no. Uh, our... Andre Arlovsky. Oh my God. Yeah, he's he's. I thought he, he was you know. done. I got one more in me," he said. Um, <laughs> Kelvin Vince Gaslam, Carter. Sean Brady. That'll be an that'll be an interesting, very very interesting. Sean Brady, Kelvin Gaslam, December second. Um, I'm not sure who I got there. I think Sean Brady, but uh, Kelvin Gaslam's a fucking dog. So um, who else? Clay Guida. He said, "I got one more left in me." He's fighting Joe Joaquin Silva on December second as well. Um, not sure why, but they're really uh, uh, beefing up that whole. Uh, December second card because they knew that Misha Tate and Julia Avila being a main event is the most <laughs> disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. So Cannoneer and Delete. Or I guess also. it's technically not. They don't really have a main event for that. Technically, they're all just <laughs> kind of three five minutes. So I guess we'll des- they'll decide who the main event is at some point. Who knows though? Uh, Jake Matthews, Michael Morales, also a pretty good, pretty good scrap. Rob Font and Figueredo also welcome yeah. Figgy to a new division. Um, That'll be interesting. Khalil Roundtree, Azamat Mirzakhanov. Uh, this is this is one that we have all of the interest in. Matt Steamroller for Vola against Benoit Sandini. That's oh, awesome. Oh, that is a fucking. I'm hey, whatever the under one and a half or a, even the half around. I'm sm- I'm smashing that thing. Somebody's going to sleep or somebody's getting rocked very early. Yeah. Uh, Fight does bang, not right? start the second round is going to be the bet there that night. Yeah. It seems, but. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I think I'm going to be on St. Denis for the record uh, ahead of time. I'm just going to let you know that so that you don't get upset when you bet the steamroller. I know you're a big steamroller guy, and I, 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 I support him as well, but I cannot leave the God of War going I don't think I can either. by himself. Yeah, no, nah, it's just... I don't think I can either. It's a personal battle, and there you go. So uh, I guess, is that all? I think we can get into this slop fest that was this uh, UFC Vegas 79. To, with all due respect, of course, to uh, everyone involved, but uh, it's just kind of another main event that's marred in, uh, you know, not necessarily even controversy, just kind of uh, we don't get the result that we wanted. Rafael Fazeev, his knee literally explodes in the second round, and Matus Gamrock gets a TKO victory via leg injury. Uh, I guess the was there. We got to see seven minutes of this fight before this uh, injury happened. I thought Fazeev looked good. I thought his. This fight was, I think, feel like they were just about to start get going. It was just kind of, they were wading their way into the storm a little bit. Gamrot was, you know, was his relentless self, you know, kind of 
catching those kicks and trying to force those little single leg, like literally picking his leg up all the way above his head and stuff. Like, and Fazeev's balance was unbelievable. Uh, I saw people saying, oh, maybe he hurt his foot on the elbow and stuff. But, you know, when, when you saw the replay, you realized, oh, my God, he hurt the leg, his plant leg on that kick. And it just, you see his, I, I don't know if it was his quad or I'm no, I'm no doctor, but it kind of just popped. And uh, that was it for Rafael Fazeev. So we take a, uh, or I take that loss on the TKO bet. And, I'm uh, glad I stayed away. Main event curse, man. The apex yeah. is cursed for yeah, main events. It seems like it. Especially when one of us bet on one of the fighters, they always get hurt. Literally every time. I stayed away, but you couldn't. You you had to get sucked into the curse. Yep. I was uh, on a, I was on Ortega, and I was also on, was it Aspinall? Um, who else? Somebody else. There was another one. Oh, uh, what, what's it called? Yair and uh, Ortega? We had Ortega? Yep, yep. yep. That was fun. Um, it, so, very unfortunate. Um, I feel like Fazeev was doing pretty well. But again, like you said, we it, it hadn't really gotten started. Um, so that sucks. That that truly is the fucking worst thing to happen. And now, hopefully, he doesn't miss too much time. But yeah, it's not like you can run run that fight back in a couple months. Uh, so I, I don't know. I don't know. I guess you just you treat it as a win. You know, not a great win, but it's a win nonetheless for uh, Matus Gamrot by KO TKO. If you had him inside the distance, there you go. Well, you don't tell that that Matus Gamrot that it's not a big win because that man celebrated <laughs> like he just won the Super Bowl after that guy's knee blew out. So it was. Uh, <laughs> Quite a spectacle there to see. Uh, 55 is another division that's going to kind of seem like it's on a uh, holding pattern now. After that Gaethje Poirier fight, you really don't know what's next. I mean, does, is Benil uh, lined up for anyone yet? Uh, I don't I don't believe so. I, don't. Um, I thought he was. I mean, I know they're talking about different guys and whatnot, but I, I feel like he was supposed to fight like Saruki or don't something think. like that. But I don't. I don't think so. So yeah, I don't think there's. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I mean, look. I think there was a rumor, but I think it was just yeah. They, n- nothing was ever really made. So it seems like that division's going to be in a little bit of a holding pattern. So maybe a guy like Gamrod, who didn't really take much damage on Saturday night, could probably pop back in there and you know take advantage of that kind of. I don't know, power vacuum, I guess, because it seems like there's not, like, you know, Gaethje, Poirier. I mean, Gaethje seems like he'll, he, he's next for whoever wins that fight in, the, in, the, uh, in October. Yeah. If it's Islam, even better for him because it's, you know, a fresh matchup. Maybe not, you know, matchup-wise it's not better because that's hell to fight a guy like Islam Makachev. But, you know, he has the loss to Charles Oliveira. Poirier's just there, so maybe somebody could fight Poirier if that's what Poirier wants to do. But you never know. You really don't know what Poirier's up to now. Chandler's waiting for McGregor. He'll be probably never fight again. Uh, <laughs> you know, and Fazeev. Like, you know, it's just kind of a, another holding pattern situation, so it, it seems like. Yep. And uh, it just sucks. It just sucks. I would like to have seen Fazeev go out on a sword and just get knocked out as opposed to something like this where we are like, oh, well, you know, who knows what would have happened kind of a situation. So it sucks. Also, shout out to Joe Martinez. They should have had him uh, do the no-check card, and I will stand by that. Oh, I agree with you, but he's not the better uh, <laughs> ring announcer, so I will. No, he's just the best. No, he's not. But Michael Diamante <laughs> is. But, uh, <laughs> David uh, Diamante, come on. Whatever the fuck his name is. Who cares? Uh, Bryce Mitchell, the holy roller. How about him, man? Getting in there with his Bible uh, after the fight. Uh, That's cr- I, Why did he bring that into the ring? Did nobody see that? Uh, that shouldn't be allowed. Well, I mean, you I can't guess bring you really flags, can't. You can bring the Bible. Yeah, you really can't stop these guys from doing Did he whatever. Sneak it in, his, <laughs> in his trunks or something? I, who knows? I got my Bible with me. You're like, oh boy. I, 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 you know, it's funny. I went back and watched it like later, but during the fight, did not have. I didn't have the sound on watching the fu- the fights. I was I had the dual monitor going on with the Notre Dame game. Not going to talk about that right now. But yeah, uh, uh, you know, tune in to tomorrow's episode if you want to hear <laughs> what I have to say about that. But. Uh, all in all, Bryce Mitchell, I think, you know, did exactly what we thought he could do or should do in, in a sense. Uh, Danny, Ige, it's just it's tough matchup when you're fighting Bryce Mitchell. He is relentless. He his takedowns are just aggressive, strong. He's very good, uh, you know, with the wrestling and on the ground. Uh, you know, he, you know, although like we've talked about, Ige was able to get back up at some points, but it doesn't really matter when you know you just spent two minutes on the ground. You, you're winning minutes, and Bryce Mitchell seems like a good point minute winner and uh he may not get a lot of finishes because you know it just seems like that's the way but you know he looked good on saturday yeah, got, he he got he chipped got... up a little bit though yeah he was getting marked up and man i just you know if you were holding a dan Ige ticket you were just begging for him to not get taken down and 
and controlled. And that's exactly what happened. And very, very unfortunate. He landed, I think, four total strikes in the third round. Uh, low output. But while they were standing, man, Ige was definitely cracking him and oh, yeah. winning the striking exchanges. But yeah, he just, he, you know, typical Dan Ige fashion. Can't put it together. Can't put more than one round or uh, even a round. Um, together is takedown defense, 58%. Uh, again, a lot of people thought Nate Landwehr let him off the hook without, you know, when he didn't try to grapple at all. And, uh, I agreed. So I, you know, I think Danny Gay is probably, uh, trending downwards, unfortunately. Yeah. And it's just a tough, uh, you know, like it's tough for him. That's a tough matchup. If you match him up with somebody who wants to stand and bang, he's going to have success, but he's also kind of small. It seems he's small for that 45 division. So I don't know. I mean, at least him in stature. You know, he's 5'7". You know, he may have a good reach, but that only does you so much. But how about Marina Rodriguez? I mean, you want to talk about a fucking beatdown. This was about as ugly as it gets. I did not – let me just say I want to go out and say this first. Don't want to see Michelle Waterson Gomez back in the octagon anymore. I think she's done her what she needs to do. She took one of the worst beatings I've I've seen, and uh, I'm so glad I didn't bet. I wish I would have bet the TKO, obviously, but – uh, I, it, this was just ugly, Ty. This is real ugly. I, she was Bad, elbows, uh, straight hand, wherever she, she wanted to. Like she couldn't she stop, couldn't stop any of those knees. Thing. Yeah, those knees. That's right. Oh my god, those were vicious. And um, I mean, she's a savage. She's got the heart of a warrior. But um, that's not gonna. <laughs> she's lost six of seven now, and the only win was a split against Angela Hill, which. Could have won either way. Yeah. Like, she could be on a seven-fight losing Don't streak. Don't tell that That's to Angela fucking... Hill, by the way. No, absolutely do not. I think there's almost just a car accident right out front of my uh, balcony. But um, seven in a row, I mean, nobody wanted to see the rematch because the first fight, you know, she didn't win at all. Uh, they ran it back, and she gets steamrolled uh, even even easier, even quicker. And uh, the, the last fight with Luana Pinheiro was close, but she, got, uh, she outstruck her. But she wasn't landing the damaging shots. That's always been her problem. You know, she has her little, her style, uh, but she just, she gets hit hard. She doesn't throw anything back, really. I mean, um, does she have any finishes in the UFC? Yeah, I guess her, it's, it's kind of funny. Her first four wins in the UFC, her first four yeah. fights in the UFC, she got a, she got four subs. Tyra Parker, whoever the fuck that is, uh, that was under the Strike Force banner. I gotcha. Okay, that's why. Her first two fights in the UFC, she also had an Invicta armbar over Jessica Penne. Uh, Angela Magana, not sure who that is, and Paige Van Zandt. So that's her wins, her, her finishes. Yeah, I mean, not great. Uh, she also had Paige Van Zandt, Michelle Waterson was a uh, UFC on Fox main event. So, what, pe- so what, what people have told me is Paige's content has uh, escalated oh, as well. For, uh, uh, some I'll people have, have to, told uh, me that. I'll have to check her only pipes. But, my my um, sources also, have told me. <laughs> my sources on the my boots on the ground. <laughs> my sources have. Uh, have told me that her content, Kay Hansen also starting to starting to up her game, uh, uh, working in the gym. I'm not uh, sure which gym, but she's uh, uh, okay. I don't know. Yeah, you never know when she's saying when you say up her game. It's like, well, is she still fighting or what is you know what's going on here? Piers not. Piers those days are over. Also, yeah, but I, I agree with you, Michelle Waterson Gomez. Don't think she should fight anymore. That was just a uh, a mauling. And after the fight, she's like, I'm in good spirits. She made some kind of uh, she she some kind of inspirational quote message about the seed being blossomed or blooming. It's over. Uh, I don't know. She got, <laughs> it's over. You got fucking shellacked and smoked throughout the, the, the cage somehow made it into the second round. Not sure how that happened, but um, I feel like the ref, was it uh Kerry Hatley? I feel like he could have stepped in a little sooner, but yeah. honestly, Michelle Waters, <laughs> I guess she was, you know, she didn't die. So he's like, Oh, she's fine. But maybe he had a Marina Rodriguez round two ticket. I'm not sure, but she got battered. Yeah, she got beat up pretty bad. Like I said, don't want to see her anymore. Uh, and Marina Rodriguez, I, I'll have to see her do it to somebody who's not thirty-seven. So uh, when that happens, uh, I'll I'll, be, I'll feel better about it. But I mean, what was what this? Is one fifteen? It's just kind of that like middle uh, of the rankings. There is just a clusterfuck. It's just people hopping in and out of spots, and you know, you never know what version of who's going to show up on a given night. So. How about Brian Battle? You keep you keep disrespecting Brian Battle, and every time he goes out there and just does what the people want him to do, I I really do think though that I mean AJ Fletcher just you really can't you're really fighting an uphill battle when you're fighting a guy that has a ten inch reach advantage on you and is just that much bigger than you as a human being. Uh, 
I don't know if AJ well. Fletcher should. Yeah, I just don't know if he should be at seventy. I don't know. No, probably not. I mean, I don't know if he can get the fifty-five, but I would try if I if I were him. It's just not a. Uh, oh. It's not good. There's only the guys that are only you know more powerful and bigger the higher up in the rankings you go. If you can't if you can't take out Pooh Bear, then uh, you got you got you got some problems. <laughs> No, but did, doesn't he? Didn't he uh, don a new nickname? The barbarian? No, the the butcher. Brian the butcher battle. I kind of uh, like that. I mean, Pooh Bear is just. I mean, that's just bad. The butcher is at least you know if he butcher he's butchered people before, right? So I feel yeah. like it, it can kind of stick. And it Brian battle butcher. Uh, what's that called? Alliteration. Um, also coming down from one eighty five, and Fletcher probably should be at one fifty five. I mean, listen, Fletcher was doing pretty well early because, like I said, Brian Battle was on his back foot. Not really. He wasn't throwing his hands at all. Just throwing just just teep kicks up the Mitchell uh, Mitchell up the middle, which were Shut working. Out. I mean, Fletcher's body was red because he's very pale. But like, I thought he won the first round, or at least made it close because he landed a couple. Uh, he knocked him down right with that elbow inside, right off the the, yeah. the the clinch break. And I was like, man, good shit, AJ Fletcher. We're doing good. And then he got taken down and just back taked, and that was just. Well, the second round started. Brian Battle came out way more aggressive. He was actually coming forward. And when he does that, he's he's pretty good. It's just. You know, a consistency thing. I think also he's a slow starter, so just some things to work on for him. But I mean, listen, he's getting things done at 170. You know, it's it's sometimes a dormant division, um, and he has some some uh, some tools to work with, and he's uh, he's doing pretty well. Like you said, I have counted him out. I keep doing it. Maybe I shouldn't. He's won two in a row. I think he's you're five going to one next time. in the UFC. No, yeah, you will. You yeah, will. oh yeah, he, oh absolutely. Especially if he runs it back with uh, Renat, he's he's cooked. But um, well, yeah, I mean, who the. Fu- <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we should make that fight. Um, no, we shouldn't. No. <laughs> the gladiator. Um, yeah, Ian Gary Bryan battle next. I don't, I don't know, but good win for him. Bad win for uh, bad win. Bad loss for AJ Fletcher out of Louisiana. So if you did fade him because of the Louisiana fade, congratulations. Yeah, well, I had decision. So <laughs> last time I bet, uh, listen, this was a card that made me regret ever betting decisions, and I won't do it again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Charles Jordan. With the submission victory, I think I had inside the distance on this, but I don't. I didn't write it down, so I, I'm gonna have to go back and listen uh, to it. I feel like down, I took huh? it though. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm. I, I, I'm gonna have to go back and I'm listen just... for verification because it seemed like I was all on that when I when I. I mean, I bet it, and then I look back at the sheet later, and I'm like, what, what the fuck? Fuck happened here? But uh, hey, easy easy guillotine victory for your boy. Uh, what uh, what say you, Ty? Yeah. It's weird. He he was threatening it for so long. I I, I figured Jordan or uh, Hamos would you know know what's going on and, and and not continue to keep his neck and bury his neck deeper. And he kept doing it. Yeah. Uh, I think I don't know what was it was it a Ezekiel choke? No. What did he have before it? It wasn't a Darius, was it? It could have been. I forget. Like he he kind of transit. He kind of had it in. I forget. Dominic Cruz did a really good job of this fight. Kind kind of because uh, I, I didn't think it was. I was like, you know what? He's an idiot. He's just going to pop his head out. Getting a guillotine here is really hard, especially against Hamos. And Dom Cruz kept kept saying, no, it, it, "You know, that's in, that's in, that's in." And um, man, huge statement for Charles Jordan to to, to tap Ricardo Hamos. Kind of like a, a panic tap. Like he tapped, and as soon as he tapped, and Jordan let go, he was like, you know, obviously he wasn't going to sleep or anything. So uh, I'm not saying he shouldn't have tapped because obviously that thing was in tight. Also, he had. You know, he was kind of threatening it for like three, four minutes. So, uh, obviously, there was a lot of pressure. And Jordan's still young, man. He's, what, 95? I think he was born in 95. Like, we've always been high on him. And, obviously, he's had his ups. He's had his downs. But that's kind of what has to happen when you're in your mid-20s. You know, I, I, I think I'd much rather see that than, you know, the Ian Gary approach where you're fighting a bunch of cans. Not necessarily cans, but easy matchups and then not doing great in those matchups. Uh, Charles Jordan, quick finish uh, over... Over Ricardo Hamos, so yeah, big win. I mean, Ricardo Hamos, bit of a fraud, I yeah. think. Yeah, that's, um, that was kind of what I thought going into it, and it kind of proved it for me. Yeah, bounce back after that Crone Grazy fight, which is not his fault, but uh, he gets a finish here. And uh, yeah, I mean, listen, this is this is our boy, so uh, we'll see if he can continue to make strides at featherweight. For the, this is while while I w- did have the sound on, but I got to say, man, another great night for Dominic Cruz for the fights that I did yeah. watch with the sound. He just he's awesome, man. And honestly, he kind of keeps Bisping in check when Bisping's in there. You know, because Bisping starts going crazy sometimes, and you're like, oh boy, here yeah, we go. it's kind of like how I'm my lord, <laughs> I'm my god. Yeah, and also when when they start talking about grappling positions, I I really only want to hear Daniel uh, Dominic Cruz talk about you know 
what, what, basically what's going on, telling me what's going on in grappling um, exchanges. When, when Bisping talks, I'm like, ah, eh, I don't think you really know Bisping's what you're talking like, about. Bisping's like, why aren't but... they standing? You're like, all right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus, dude. Uh, there is more other to than, this than just throwing fucking hammers at each other, bro. Other than um, Dom Cruz saying, I don't think Rose is uh, going to get slammed on her head here three seconds before she got slammed on yeah, her head. She's fine uh, he, here. He's done. <laughs> She's, and she's having a uh, seizure. You're like, okay, well, do you fucking <laughs> lied to me, dude? I think he's, uh, other than that, he's done really well. Uh, my favorite grouping might be Felder, uh, Anik, and Cruz, honestly. Or Felder, Anik, and Senko. I think Felder, Cruz, Felder, Senko, I think that those three have a great chemistry and they work really well together. Obviously, all being four fighters. I know Bisping was too, but he's just, um, I don't know, he's kind of like DC. Love when uh, Felder's in there too. Yeah, you're right. I think if- he's the man. He's also getting back in that cage, baby. I know. How about that, man? He wants the UFC 300. I mean, that's good. That might, it sounds like that card's going to be six hours or 16 hours long. I should say <laughs> yeah. it's going to be a fucking all yeah. day affair. Uh, I have to gear off for that one, but you might have you know. to come up for that one. We might have an all time party yeah. here at my at my crib just to fucking go. by the you know prelim main event. We're gonna be fucking. Uh, I'll have wasted, a live so. pod with fucking thirty five people in uh, in the pod. We'll just do it. Screaming. We should we, get as many people as we can, right? That'd be very unfiltered. I feel like we wouldn't even be. No, I think people would get arrested if if they, <laughs> if I had some of these people that watch these fights with me on there. So they'd be like, "Wait, you're recording <laughs> well, we me?" I'd be like, "Yeah, dude, told you that when you came here." Oh shit! Yeah, the, the flashing lights and camera are they not uh, evident? Yeah. Um, also, we would have to take a shot every time. Um, well, so we have to make drinking games for sure. Then, oh my you know. god, yeah, we'd be, I, I would be absolutely be fucking nuked by the time. I, god knows, what do you think the main event? We know we'll talk about that another time. I wonder what the main event for something like that would be. It'd have to be something huge, man. Brock, Connor, and Taporia. Connor and Brock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's keep it moving. Um, Floyd Mayweather and Ronda Rousey. <laughs> run. Yeah, the fight that the people have been waiting for. I'm I'm gonna beat her ass, man. I I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna take it easy on her. I'm gonna beat her fucking ass. You're like, okay, here we go. All right. Um, <laughs> all right, Floyd. It's not nothing out, you know, out of normal for you, man. You you like to uh, put your hands on women. Shout out. All right. Um, all how right. about Miles Johns taking out Dan Argetta? Uh, he kind of just had enough to beat him. Miles Johns didn't. I mean, it was this was a gritty performance from him. I think he looked good in this fight. Dan Argetta is just kind of a relentless pace fighter who has you like you. I think you said this: no striking defense at all. Uh, he Jesus, just kind of stands man. there and I mean, eats shots. It, but you know his Bisping kept saying he he's just coming in like a zombie. Yeah, like a zombie. I love when he says the word <laughs> zombie. I think it's so funny. Uh, he's just walking in like a zombie. And um, dude, he he kept, he kept, he doing, kept it. doing it. It was like the most predictable thing. Like he would come like. The way he would walk forward was very aggressive, and he was like he he would move his body a little bit side to side, and then he would just get fucking <laughs> countered every time, and then he would just keep he would just keep doing it. And I'm like, bro, what are we doing here? Like, you know, Miles Johns, I think, got very tired after that first. Was it a, right away? There's a just a grappling exchange, a, like a big scrum, right? They just kept trying to. Well, yeah, and then uh, Argetta ended up on his back like, on the cage, and then ended up on the ground on his back, and, I mean, I feel like Argetta probably won the first round, or it, he could have, because then Miles Johns got up and landed some good shots, but, I mean, Argetta was on his back for, it felt like, two or three minutes of that round, and, I mean, but it didn't really matter, because Miles Johns won those last two rounds pretty handedly, and he was landing whenever he wanted, and Argetta got, Argetta, didn't, I would say, didn't get, like, completely dominated, but it's just, he has some serious holes in his game that are going to hold him back. Absolutely. Yeah, this was a uh, – again, the fact that he was the favorite uh, I thought was crazy. But shout out to Miles Johns. Catch that ticket. I wish I put $5 million on it because I was very, very confident yeah. in getting this win. And uh, he, yeah, he His did, striking is like wild though. It kind of like worked out for him. He just throws very loopy. wild loop and shots. Yeah, it's just – if he he's one of those guys, he's like a fucking keg, man. If he threw straight like right down the chute, he'd probably knock people the fuck out, man. But he just I don't know, you know yeah. what? What are you gonna do? But uh, how about the Dirty Bird, Tim Means, man? You had this one as well. Uh, look, Falaho stinks, and I, I should have known this. I, I said it the last time that he fought, but he can't. I mean, I won't even say he can't take a shot because that knee, that the first knee, I think it was in the second round that landed her. For I don't remember what round. But it was a bomb, and he, you know, he got wobbled, but he stayed upright, and he, he survived it. But 
The knee was there the whole time, and Tim Means landed it a couple more times before he eventually ended the fight in the third round with it. Uh, Tim Means was throwing heat. He was eating shots that weren't really affecting him. Uh, I mean, I, Falajo just stinks, man. I just think, you know, he got vetted out by uh, by Tim Means. You know, Tim Means still has it. He's not, you know, it's not going to be an easy night out when you go fight Tim Means, but... I mean, he, that, was, that was a guy who had just lost three in a row, and he just came out and dominated Andre Filajo. So. Maybe yeah, there's not a spot uh, for actually, Mr. Filajo in the uh, UFC. Yeah, I think he's probably an LFA, an L, an LFA fella. Honestly, maybe Bellator or PFL, uh, whatever they're doing, they can sign him. But um, I was kind of impressed by him. Like He had moments where he was really – he had Tim Means on the, on the cage or on the, on the, on the retreat – and he was landing some good shots, but he's very, just very basic. Like I said before, he kind of throws like that heavy right kick, left hook, and that's like it, like a right uppercut maybe, like a, or a big right. He just swings kind of wild. He has power, but he just doesn't know how to hone it um, to, to his best ability. And uh, other than that, he just doesn't really have anything. Like his striking defense is just absolutely abysmal. Tim Means landed 72% of his significant strikes, and Tim Means swings wild sometimes. Like, uh, yeah, so just great finish for the Dirty Bird. He still has a little bit left in him. Uh, I'm not sure how much, you know. Cause, not a little know, bit. Some, Yeah, not not too much, but uh, just enough to really get you by Mr. Andre Fialiu. Uh Also, nobody knows how to say his name, so. Yeah, neither do yeah. I. And uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if. I don't know what they do with Tim Means next. I imagine they're going to feed him to some young animal next time. Uh, that's. It always seems like that's the way. It's like, oh, you got to win back. Okay, we can we can market this, and then it's just like, oh, he's fighting Shavkat Rachmanov. You're like, wait, whoa, what? Like, what are we doing here? Or, you know, somebody along those lines, maybe a uh, Miguel Baeza or something like that, which would probably be a good matchup. But uh, I'd like to see Honestly, what they do yeah. with Tim Means next. But I think it's going to be something along those lines. Um, this was gross and disgusting. Cody Brundage. Wins this fight via a legal elbow to the back of the head. Now, let me just say, that was an illegal elbow. It was. And it landed pretty hard. Uh, I think we can all agree. But you could tell right away that this fight was not going to be going good for Cody Brundage. And, you know, he, he did this thing, like we said. He's going to go out. He's going to give him his all for the first minute or, minute or two. And then he's going to completely gas out. He's going to be a two-pump chump. He's going to bust his load, and then he's just going to have Jacob Malkoon on his back smashing him out. Sounds like sounds like my prom night. Yeah, <laughs> and it just seems like Cody Brundage has that quit in him, man. We, you know, we say that people have that dog in him. Cody Brundage does not have that dog in him. Uh, he yeah, has he's it, got that cat in him. Yeah, he's going to meow. Yeah, it's not. It, 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 dude, there are so many situations where he just quits, and it seems like this is a, a situation where he quit. <laughs> And you could say he had the right to or whatever. What I mean, obviously, he won this fight via illegal elbow, but now he's, like, deleting comments on his Instagram and shit like that. And he's like, you know, people are like, you're a fucking fraud, like, all this shit to him. And, he, you know, hey, he, he won double his money, right? Whatever he gets paid, 15 to 15. He walked out of there with some extra bread. But we all, we everybody knows the real shit. You're not going to get support for getting elbowed in the back of your head. And it was just dumb by Jacob Malcolm. He didn't need to do that. But really, I, I you know what really pissed me off is that I lost that bet because of that, too. Like, <laughs> oh, I man. lost an I, inside the distance because this guy fucking elbowed him in the back of the head. And I didn't even get a void. Could have used a void. I can't get over the, the meow. That was crazy. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I feel like it should have been a no contest, man. I, you know. I guess he did elbow him in the back of the head, and then Bisping Cruz kind of trying to differentiate if it was a forearm or an elbow, and Dom's like, no, no, it was an elbow. He might only end up with the forehead or the forearm, but <laughs> getting hit in the back of the head in general is, is not good. Miserable, not good yeah. for your – also, it makes me uh, – it's one of the, the – one of the worst things you can do to really just set me off is touch the back of my head. Yeah. I do not like it whatsoever. I will just freak the fuck out. So, um, yeah, I mean, right after they, they kind of stopped action – Brundage, I don't want to say he looked fine, but he kind of did. And then he, he, he needed to take all the time in the world. They brought the doctor in here, and he's just, he's just sitting there against the cage. His body language was pretty much like, I'm, I'm not going to stand up. <laughs> Yo, so. He's going, no. No, like I'm done. Like, like I don't care what happens. I don't care what you guys decide. I'm not fighting anymore. It's just like, wow. Like The ringside physician comes into the, the octagon, looks, at him, looks him in the eyes, 
for like seven seconds. And then he's like, yeah, this fight's over. <laughs> he's not fighting again. Um, and then when they read off, I think, I think Malcoon thought it was, it would be a no contest. And then as soon as, uh, Joe Martinez read off the winner, he was, um, he was not happy. And he, he shouldn't be, he shouldn't, he shouldn't get a loss for that. You can say, Oh, it was stupid. All you want. It was one shot. It wasn't four. You know, like how many times have we seen somebody land multiple uh, shots to the back of the head? I, I'm trying to think of the one, the one fucking really obvious one that was very recent, but I'm really having trouble. So, whatever. Either way, that I, I think it should have been a no contest. I don't think you can reward the guy for winning. Props to him for getting his win bonus and maybe getting another fight in the UFC. I mean, honestly, that's something Dana White will cut you. He does not care. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I mean, Jacob Malkoon got robbed. Um, kind of robbed himself partially, but what are you going to do? Yeah, he, I, you know, like I, I don't, I feel bad for Jacob Malcolm, but he did, you know, I always, uh, he did kind of put himself in that situation by just doing that dumb shit. But like you said, like mistakes happen in these fights. You kick someone in the sack by accident and they're like, oh, I can't fight. It's like, well, does that mean he loses too? You know, like I don't, I don't, I don't really, uh, agree with that. You know, being a win, like you said, I think it's a no contest, if anything. But you know, I, Cody Brundage, it ha, well, he'll get what's coming to him. He's he should he should not be in the UFC though. That's I think no. been made apparent. Like you said, just because he won this fight, doesn't, Dan, it's not going to stop Dana from cutting him. I think he knows this guy's a waste of uh, time and money, so he'll probably get rid of him soon. But uh, how about Mo Usman? Never really even came close to finishing this one. Uh, Jake Collier looked a little bit more slim, I must say. He looked pretty good. Mo Usman looked pretty good here. Uh, and, and they looked both, both these guys looked like they were in good shape, but uh, this was boring as well, too. So I really don't have much to say. Yeah. Mo Usman has the. Uh, him, and, him and his brother, they're tough. I'll give him that. But they do not react well and do not like getting punched, it, it appears. They do not like it. Um, Mo Usman, I think, is going to get knocked the fuck out brutally sometime soon. Um, it just depends on, you know. Whoever he gets, maybe he gets Voltron. Maybe Voltron and Mo Usman got to run it, run it up. You mean the clean monster? His name is Volter. I, I've uh, been, I've been schooled <laughs> on this. He's eleven and zero, and it's coming. Megatron right? Walker. You know, uh, Megatron Walker. I can't wait for him to get in there, dude. That's gonna be, <laughs> that's gonna be a fucking spectacle. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, listen, I'm not gonna sit here. Jay Collier probably shouldn't be in the UFC either. That's four in a row. Thanks for coming. Martin Boudet, you know, guys like that, Chris Barnett and Mo Usman, that's, you got to go. Andre Arlovsky, even though he kind of won that fight, but, uh, yeah, it's a loss. It's a loss and you should, we should move on. And I am in agreement. I think Mo Usman's, it's, some, it's coming for him soon. I don't know when, I don't know who, I don't know how, but somebody is going to take care of him in, in gruesome fashion <laughs> and it's going to be bad. So Jesus, they're going to butcher him and his family like yeah. lambs. Well, I'm just letting the people know what the shit, what the real <laughs> shit is, but how about Mizuki Inoue? You want to talk about scorecards? Uh, these were all over the place. Uh, th this is one of the scorecards I had to look up because I was like, what did people like think about the?" I mean, I don't think anybody had the same thing. I think it was all over the place, all three of them. Uh, and she beats Hannah Goldie, which we kind of expected. I had the sub, which was a dumb bet, another dumb bet. Uh, I had another dumb bet. And this is just a dumb day for me, a bad day for your boy. <laughs> But uh, yeah, now Mizuki, uh, you know, c took care of business against Hannah, and uh, that's that. Yeah, Mizuki, I guess, dropped the Inoue out of her name. I guess you can just do that when you're an Asian fighter or an Asian. So she's just Mizuki uh, now. Person. Yeah, just Mizuki. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, um, Tapology needs to step up then, because uh, they got they got Inoue yeah. still there. Well. I don't know. Um, yeah, Adelaide Bird, Junichi or Kamijo, David Lethaby all had different cards. Um, Adelaide Bird gave the first two to Mizuki. Uh, Kamijo gave one and three to Mizuki, and Lethaby gave two and three to Mizuki. So they all just did it. No, they, were, they weren't sure. I mean, it was a pretty, you know, uh, elef Invicta, I guess. This fight probably should have taken place in Invicta. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, the first three cards of this night were very, very non-UFC level, uh, especially this one. This one was bad. I mean, Hannah Goldie, listen, she's jacked. She's she's pretty hot, I think, in a, in a kind of weird way. Not weird way, but yeah, if you're she's just that. jacked as fuck. Yeah, she's cute, for sure. Um, and she seems fun. She seems nice. She seems like she fucking works hard. I heard she's awesome. She's really good in the gym, but when the lights come on, man, she's just, she's just painfully, painfully average. Like... This fight was so boring. <laughs> it was just so boring. Speaking man. of which, yeah. 
Speaking of which, Montserrat Rendon, not to be confused with Anthony Rendon, gets a split decision against Tamiris Vidal. I had inside the distance. Another dumb bet. Another just dumb, <laughs> dumb bet. I got, I got, you know what? I got to chill the fuck out when I do this podcast. I get lost in the sauce. I was trying here. to tell you. No, you were. And I was like, no, nah, no. Nah, I'll win enough that these won't matter. No, I didn't. I definitely didn't. And this, this mattered, okay? I got fucking cooked on Saturday night. But you want to talk about cooked. I got cooked on that. And then my Irish lose on the last second of the fucking, re- you know what? All right. I'm not going to do that. But listen. With 10 guys on the field. 10 guys on the field twice. But at the end of the day. Montserrat Rendon took care of business. You know what I did want to talk about for this fight is that I believe it was a Kerry Hatley stopped the fight after Vidal got punched in her tit. Yeah, that and, was. And then and then the, like <laughs> you hear Bisping and uh, Cruz are like, are they? Is that are they allowed to? And I'm thinking in my head the same thing. I'm like, wait, is that a thing? Like I didn't, I never yeah. seen a girl. And you see Kerry Hatley like, no, 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 we're going, we're going, get in here. And he's, <laughs> fucking Vidal's rubbing her tit like, ah, oh, shit, man, that fucking hurt. But uh, what a boring, what a boring fight this was, man. And Vidal stinks. Uh, the Rendon just won this fight off pure uh, action and just kind of putting shit out there and landing head strikes as opposed to leg kicks. And that's kind of what won her the fight. I think Vidal won the first round, and I think uh, Rendon won the last two. That would be my scorecard. But yeah, there you go. Um. Yeah, I feel like they should definitely make it a rule that, you know, a low blow, a, a low strike to a man is similar to a low or high <laughs> strike to a woman. Because I feel like that has to hurt, uh, you know. If, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I imagine getting punched in your tank yeah. hurts. Yeah, I imagine you, your, your, your boobs and your balls are very uh, similar in um, – I can't think of the word. In fr- fr- fragility, maybe they're both very fragile. Like, I'm sure it hurts both. Anyway, also getting kicked in the in the vag, I'm sure also can't feel great. Um, so yeah, maybe we should outlaw that. Maybe we should uh, <laughs> mess with the rule. It's funny because that like never happens for yeah, some reason. I've never somehow, seen that happen. Or at least, um, but yeah, that uh, it, you know, there you go. Uh, also, Chris Lieben somehow giving a uh, Tamir's to, to Vidal two rounds is just, I mean. Yeah, I, I don't Bad. see. I saw the second round he gave her, I think. And that, that's where I was like, I looked at the scorecards and I was like, who gave. And I looked at Chris Lee and I went, God damn it, man. Like, that's the one guy that we couldn't really. You know, like, we, we can't really afford for you to be just giving out random scorecards like that. But, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, who cares? I mean, at the end of the day, who really cares? That was UFC Vegas 79. Uh, performance of the night goes to. Uh, Marina Rodriguez, Charles Jordan also gets 50000 And fight of the night was Tim Means and Andre Filou. Filau. Filau. Uh, however you want to say it. But I think that was worthy of the money. And this is a card that kind of we're going to forget about by next week. So um, it's just kind of unfortunate. Things just really didn't go its way. And it just kind of snowballed from there. And it just was ugly. But uh, any uh, contender series thoughts before we get out of here? I guess I know you got to uh, – you have a – a hard out here soon, but uh, I don't well, know. Well, not I do not anymore. It oh, okay. My sister has left my ass stranded. There you go. I've been stranded, and I don't even know how if I'm getting over to the the Tampa now. So we'll see. I don't. I don't know what's going on. I have to stay tuned from scratch. Stay tuned. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure. I think the main event is going to be a banger for this. Uh, I I, th- I have to tape this a little bit. Uh, I've had a brutal weekend. I haven't slept in ever. There you um, go. So yeah, I'm not too sure. Honestly, I don't have any thoughts. I think tomorrow I'll give you some uh, some thoughts um, if we uh, if we run it back, which I think we might. And um, our contender series picks are for Twitter anyway. So that's I just yeah. to, I didn't know if you had any. Little, I mean, other than uh, uh, Sora Rock Rock Mom Fraud off, uh, that was the only one that we were really had some thoughts and opinions on. And here we go. There's a video playing on this fucking thing. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? Are you just me? Get out of here. Yeah, we're done. We're done. All right. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Shoulder Strikes MMA Podcast. Listen, Tapology. I have it fucking muted. Why do you play music and shit while I'm on the podcast? Why? Doesn't matter anyway. But how about it, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Matt McSweeney. I am Tom Capone. And listen, guys, as always, uh, set your units to a certain level and don't go over them, okay? Because sometimes you end up 
getting cooked on a Saturday night, and it ruins well, your Saturday one, and your Sunday, baby. So, uh, and shout out to uh, Taylor Swift showing up to the uh, Chiefs game. We'll talk more about it tomorrow. Go Birds.